have robbed the Holy Spirit from finding expression. Some of these songs you see me coming, bringing from the Spirit. Many of us, God has been wanting to pass through you. But this rigidity we put, there is, there is a sense of religion. I am busy trying to make money, trying to read books, trying to be successful. We, our spirits are not malleable enough for the Holy Spirit to pass through us. The restraint is too much. That's why we don't get this down. That's why our discernment is very low. Because we are busy. It takes, it takes staying in the present. Let me tell the truth. You will never touch certain frequencies in the spirit when you are busy around trying to combine spirituality and many other things. The presence of God is a full-time assignment. You must stay until the sound comes. Stay until the melodies come. Stay until the power comes. For when he comes, he comes with light. For when he comes, he comes with ease. For when he comes, he comes with illumination. Many of you have been praying, Oh Lord, take me to a new level. It's not just by prayer. Stay in the presence. Stay in the glory. That's the key. That's the secret. It's not just moving around. No, the glory doesn't just fall overnight. When you stay, your spirit man begins to acclimatize to the frequency of the spirit. That's how it works. It's not a hit and run thing. You just rush and come out. And then you want to share with accuracy. Then you want his glory to flow. It doesn't work like that. There is a, there is a staying. There is a staying. I tell you. It's a law. You must stay. The church has learned to hurry God. And we are hurrying the glory of God out of our lives. There are many of you here, listen. When you started out with God, you had the time and the staying power. But I don't know what it is that has happened. God is challenging us. That secret place is now a strange place for many of us. We are busy doing ministry. We are busy trying to make a living. We are busy trying to move around. The church has lost the art of the secret place. This is not a place. It's a place where you stay. Like a waiter, stay until his glory comes. And then when his glory comes, there is a signature upon your life. Undeniable. The secret place is the place of power. The secret place is the place where you have a message. If God does not sit upon you with his glory, you have no message. You can talk. It's not about Rema. It's about the presence that follows it. You can preach all you can. But there is a glory. This is a testament of his visitation upon your life. That's what creates impact. That's what breaks chains. I like you to pray and say, Lord, show me your glory. Greater levels of your glory. Please pray. Please pray. Expose me to that realm. Superior dimensions of your glory. I have tasted of your glory. I have seen what your grace can do. But Lord, there is a desperation within my spirit. To taste of something tangible. down if you can. For those who can sit, there will be many impartations. The spirit of prophecy is strong in this place. Night. Mm-hmm. 
Some of you will never recover from tonight's meeting. I tell you. You will not even know what is happening to you. It's an encounter. Listen, listen. If you are a man of God in this place, I submit to you. You are wasting the time of God's people if you cannot convey the presence to that atmosphere. That's how habits are broken. That's how chains are broken. That's how impartations happen. It's not just by laying on of hands. How many your hands on? Let the glory come and there is transformation. Let the glory come and something is happening in people. Let the glory come and testimonies, sicknesses. Many of you are sitting down right now and sicknesses will just disappear. No, it can't stand the glory. Prayer lives have been revived. Different dimensions of the spirit. That's why the place is called Koinonia. It's not a place of discussion. It's an atmosphere of encounter. Lord, let nothing restrain your hand in the midst of your people. Let nothing restrain your hand. Don't rob God from finding a vessel in you. Don't rob God from finding a truly anointed vessel in you. See, let me tell you something. If you follow this rubbish people are doing of just visiting God's presence to come and receive breakthrough and prosperity and power and rush back, you will never find God that way. Please believe me when I tell you this. God is not an object you use. You see that? There are some of us, our gifts are dormant for a very long time. A long time. That press in the spirit to activate you. Listen, it's an anomaly when you remain in the same spiritual level for a very long time. Something is wrong. And when you arise in, it's obvious. Everybody knows that there is a transition. Some of us are in the same position for a very long time because we are giving God barely enough. See that? There are some of us, our dreams have ceased. Our visions have ceased. Our encounters have ceased. Our passion for His glory has ceased. Listen, every time the experience you used to have with God ceases, something stops it. It never stops by default. Are we together now? There are many of us, you used to see things before they happen. Right now, it has dried up out of nothing because you are trying to look for a wife. Or look, trying to look for a wife. Or look for a husband. Hallelujah. Dry up. There's nothing here again. No power. No grace. All these things we keep making noise around within church. One person falls down. One person falls down and we jump around. That's nonsense. There are higher dimensions. There are superior levels in the spirit. Beyond calling names and phone numbers. There is the spirit, not the gift of prophecy. There is the very spirit of it. The very operation of the prophetic realm. Where people receive testimonies of Jesus without you speaking any message. The spirit of prophecy. Men live with encounters they cannot explain. No matter how hardened you are, when you come into this atmosphere, that's what happens when His presence comes. You cannot change men by the excellency of persuasions. No. It doesn't work that way. The presence. That's what brings transformation. The presence. That's what brings change. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's only a price that very few desire to pay. Because we like things cheap. 
we like things easy. Anything that commits us, we do not want. We want results, but we hate process. Or we want to be mightily used. You want to stand and see the glory of God move around. Brother, there is a price. It's not a gift, it's a reward. It's a reward for diligence. It's a reward for surrender. It's a reward for total yieldedness. I used to hear Benny Hinn say it. Total yieldedness. That's the price. Total yieldedness. That's the price for the anointing. Total yieldedness. Not half-hearted yieldedness. How many musicians are here? You have not brought one song from the Spirit. It's, it's, a, it's an indictment on your call. It's an indictment of, on your gift. There are melodies in the Spirit like waves. But there is a frequency with which your spirit must rise to. And then you will capture these things. The, the level of the sophistication of your spirit is the level to which you will capture. Many of us, our prayer lives have died, gone cold, gone cold, gone cold. You only pray until you feel tired. See, let me tell you why many of us, our prayer lives are not effective. We are only praying to justify prayer. You don't pray for the purpose of touching realities in the spirit. You see that? You can pray and then after one hour or two hours, you can say, I have tried. That's a different, you are only praying to be better than somebody else. But there is a way you come with a desperation. And you pray that your spirit will make contact. If that contact happens in 10 minutes, you end. If that contact happens in 5 hours, you continue. It's not about religion. But it starts with a desperation. A desperation. A desire. The first message the Lord is communicating tonight is let there be a revival in your spirit, man. Get back those mantles and those gifts wherever you feel them. Let those dreams come alive again. Because in those dreams are the puzzles of your destiny. A little here, a little there. Before the year runs out, we are going to take a teaching on angels and the ministry of angels. You see, many of us have lost touch with spiritual reality. It's dangerous in this time and age to just move sensually. That the limit of your perception is a three-dimensional realm. You will be a victim of too many things. You've got to access a frequency that is higher than the material realm. To supply you the strength and the illumination. Hallelujah. I challenge everyone here. There is more that God can do with your life. If you will give him space. God is not a boyfriend. He's not a girlfriend. He's not looking for an affair. He wants a relationship. A very serious one. You give God an affair, you will get nothing out of it. If God is one of the many important things in your life, believe me, you will never find Him. Believe me, you will never find Him. Listen, listen. This, find him. Listen, listen. this desire is not for men of God. This desire is for everyone who wants God. Don't you think that this bias is for pastors? No, no.